Let's dive more then into England's uh, absurd comeback against New Zealand. That's the only way I can sort of describe it. I, I, I personally watched back the final 10 minutes on Sunday morning and was actively annoyed with England for just being this ridiculous side who were terrible for a long period. And then we're fantastic. And you do just wonder whether it's going to be possible for them to play that way for 80 minutes. And Charlie, you really, really hope it is because they were great, weren't they? Yeah, they kind of threw the shackles off, didn't they? And, and went wide to wide with those three distributors with Henry Slade um, replacing Manu Tialagi. Before that, bizarrely had gone wrong in so many different ways. Um, the line out kind of Jones had, had heaped pressure on Maratoji by saying he's got to be good because of the back row we picked with Simmons there um, as a six. Um, and it wasn't the, the first try came from that from that interception, obviously. But that was quite clever from Papali. He started, he just was tracking the Toji, and when the Toji went over the 15 meter, he knew he was safe to keep going. Um, the short range um, issues just bizarrely um, continue. They had before before they went um, 19 points from three entries at the end. Um, they had three points from nine entries, oh, which kind of terrible. Which, which kind of points a picture of paints a picture of quite nice fluid stuff up to the opposition 22 and then just really running out of ideas but also just so many different areas there was um itoji la- latching onto manu tulagi for a pick and go in the second half and collapsing easy breakdown penalty and with against the side like new zealand who've got stars like Idi surveyor you don't need to be making avoidable errors because you're going to have forced errors as well Idi surveyor got a big jackal turnover in a separate kind of 22 entry so yeah just you, you don't know whether England would click one day and absolutely start thrashing teams or whether these are terminal faults that need that need big selection I mean, to change. Uh, it is becoming their Achilles heel, this, this 22 thing, isn't it? We've, we've chatted before about this. But then even, even on Saturday, even in those last 10 minutes on Saturday when they were at their fluid coast-to-coast best, when they were cutting through New Zealand, when they got to the 22, there was still that little bit almost of stage fright almost. It's got, got to be a it? psychological thing yeah, as well, you're right. It, no, it really is because, I mean, they went... 80 metres on two occasions, or 70 metres on two occasions against New Zealand. David Ribbons throwing the offload of the century at Twickenham. And then even getting over the line, it required two quite clumsy finishes by your replacement tighthead to get you over the line, one of which, well, was a try. But just <laughs> it was given. It Sweet. was given, and that's what counts. The first ever squeeze ball try. Speaking yeah. of, um, of slightly dodgy finishes, let's actually hear from the man himself, Will Stewart, because he spoke afterwards about how he was due to be going in for a bit of extra finishing training on Monday morning. So uh, come on, I think all the lads who came on brought a big impact, um, and it's great to be part of like a momentum swing like that. You can feel it. It's just, like exciting. Um, I nearly botched that first try completely. I, I, Eddie said I need to sort out my uh, my finishing drill, so I might be doing some of the wingers <laughs> next week. Um, but yeah, just uh, had quite a few uh, family members down as well, so um, yeah, it was a, a special fun of That was Will Stewart talking about how he needs to do a bit more practice on his uh, on his finishing. Uh, in terms of New Zealand, I feel like we should touch on them. They really were just superb in that first half, in particular the way. They continually targeted Jack Noel with those crossfield bombs. I think there were four in the first 19 minutes. They were just relentless with that tactic. And then actually how that kicking game came into effect again for the Rico Ioani try, which I've got to say, seen quite a few tries at Twickenham. That is right in the top bucket, top three. It was it was just perfect. Everything about it from the way Caleb Clark cut in, from the way they hit the space and the way Ioani ran down the touchline. I loved it. Yeah. They were really good, weren't they, Charlie? Really good. That We, we kind of... Um Highlighted before the game how Joe Schmidt sort of maybe simplified their attacking game a bit. It's really direct, and actually that was um, laying the foundation for that kicking game. And Eddie Jones kind of highlighted this afterwards. If you've got a sense of partnership like Geordie Barrett and Rico Ioane, you've got to get narrow. <laughs> because if you don't get narrow, you're having one-on-ones against those guys, you're losing the game line. Um, from, from their first possession, I think, there was um, an inside ball from De Groot to Jot jo- to. Josh Barrett, he's one of the one of the. <laughs> See your cousin. He's, he's, a, he's a fake. He's a fake Barrett to him to Scott Barrett, who uh, crossed the gain line into an Ardy Surveyor pick and go, smash mouth football again, isn't it? Oh, ben? it's back. Um, it's, it's back. back it's back. But then when they have that, their variety is such. Now they've got those big dynamic athletes punching holes, and they've also got the ability to go to more big dynamic athletes. Like I mean, Caleb Clark. That's, I think this must might be the first time I've seen him live, and that's kind of startling. Um, experience because wow, he's he's cool to watch. When yeah. Bo- when Bowden Barrett knocked over that drop goal to make it twenty five six, Will Greenwood was sat next to me, our columnist, and he said they're just rubbing salt in the wound at this point because it just seems so clear that they 
we're going to win this game by a mile. I thought Mark Talia actually was great on the right wing. Warren Gatland last week in his column mentioned that he's an excellent defensive winger. In fact, one of the best that Gatland said he'd ever seen. And that really showed because he had he had a turnover penalty, but he was also so solid under the high ball and in defence. I, I, in so many ways, I just cannot believe that New Zealand have lost this test. And yet it doesn't feel like... They've, a, they've t- drawn it, Ben. Sorry, but it feels like they've lost it, doesn't it? it? Yeah. I, I, I keep looking at it and thinking, I can't believe they've lost this. They haven't lost it, they've drawn it. I mean, do they wish that they hadn't have kicked that drop goal in the end? I mean, I know hindsight's a wonderful thing, but would you have played through some phases? They had the penalty advantage. Play through some phases, run the clock down a little bit more, see what what came of it, and then maybe just taken the three. I mean, you can knock off another 60 seconds with a kick at goal. Jar and C, New Zealand hit drop goal, isn't it? Because you know, yeah, normally in such a Such a sweet mentality. strike as well. You, it never looked like it was going to miss, no, did it? Yuani. <laughs> Speaking of him, he was, I mean, he, how spiky is he on the field? He's always, mm. always sledging to kind of, and sure, you can back it up when you're, when you're running it. 33, try, 33 test tries now at 25, I think. Oh, he said afterwards, yeah, I think he's, he said afterwards um, that if Richie Mwanga is playing against a side who are down to 14, who have, don't have a specialist scrum half because TJ Perinara has done his Achilles, there's no way they're kicking the ball out. And it's just interesting. It's, I think it's just a part of, England development and to be honest if you're them are you going to have I know they've gone they've gone three tries in, in 10 minutes but are you going to have total faith in your phase play given how the, the whole year's gone so far mm. I don't know I don't know yeah, and also how deflating would it have been to have lost that after all that mm. you know to have, mm. to have with, with how sort of toss of a coin some breakdown penalties can be nowadays you know you could have got to the 10 metre line there could have been a, a bit of a neck roll a side entry it's a bit borderline that 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 Mattia Reynal goes goes gives towards New Zealand, mm. and then you've lost the game. And how deflating would that have been after all that? Charles, what you're saying is all far too sensible. <laughs> I, I wish they'd gone for it. it I, I keep thinking about it because yeah. Iwani in the same quote says it's different mindsets. I.e., yeah. we would have gone for it, and yeah. Foster said the same. And uh, and I know that it's nice to have momentum and a bit of confidence going into the South Africa game. But it's a one-off test match. It's not like there's a title on the line here. It's not like there's a World Cup on the line. It's a chance for you to just test yourself under pressure and see if you can do it. It's so often Antipodean sides. You know, how many, how many often do you watch the end of the game where Australia or New Zealand just back themselves, just have that conviction to roll the dice one more time? And sure, it must not come off for them every time. No, but no. It's, and it's a self-perpetuating thing, I think. I think England will get there. I think England will get there. Do you think, I mean, I don't think Mark Smith kicks the ball off his playing for Harlequins. Do you reckon, he, do you reckon as he did it, he was thinking in his head, I don't want to do this. And as, as he's do we know who made the call? It. Was, it, was it Ben Youngs? It was really the, well The way Ben Youngs was talking it? about it, mm. Ben Youngs actually went into great depth and he said that because they'd lost, I think, Freddie Stewart and Owen Farrell to the ruck to win the to win the restart back, he was, he was saying, we didn't have all of our playmakers and we were right in the middle of the pitch so if you go left or right it, the, the numbers aren't quite there to sort of attack mm. and stretch the defense. yeah okay it all makes a lot of sense I just I don't know I wanted to see it there was a little and I'd look back Amazon didn't capture it there was a little conflab uh, while they were looping through a couple of replays of uh, Will Stewart's second try um, Farrell actually had gone back behind halfway and then went back forward to um, Marcus Smith Mako Vinopola, interestingly, was was certainly vocal as well. So they would, and we we hear a lot actually about how um, Mako is a big um, in game leader for England. So I think that would, those were the guys who were met, who were met, having the conversations. And how good was he off the bench? F- phenomenal, so phenomenal. so good. Um, he's just a footballer, isn't he? And, and that's where him and him and Genge actually offer that little bit of little bit of different. I'm not saying Genge isn't, isn't a footballer, but Genge, you've got that real real ferocity Raw. in the carry in the carry whereas Mako's probably lost a little bit of that ferocity in the carry but they uh, you know you've got to be watching guys either side of him mm. for the tip and for the pullback as well so it's almost like all options are on with Mako and he looks so energized just yeah, two, two really- more things to finish this chat on and um, with uh, Charles and I'll come to you first on this um Jack Van Portfleet tough afternoon the intercept under loads of breakdown pressure. One interesting point that we heard over the ref mic was Farrell was saying to Matthew Ray now, can you please be a bit louder and a bit clearer about mm-hmm. when the ball is out of the ruck because that was what led to Van Portfleet getting poached at one point. Um, next week, do you think he will start against South Africa and should England stick with him? England should definitely stick with him. Do I think he'll start? I'm not sure is the answer to that, but I think for definite he'll still be in the in the 23. They might... 
considering South Africa's tight again, they might go with with the sort of box kicking expertise of Ben Youngs. I mean, Van Portfleet's an excellent kicking t- kicking nine too, but they might start the experience of Youngs first. Bring bring Van Portfleet off the bench. I, I still think he'll be in and around the squad. He actually got, yeah, he didn't have his greatest game, um, Van Portfleet, but there was there was one ruck call that was very very harsh on him from from Matty Reynal and who had an, an otherwise fine game, but. Uh, yeah, it was a tough day at the office for him, but I, you've, they've got to stick with him. There was there was an arm round him from Eddie Jones at the end of the game. It looked like it. I don't think he's going to be having the the Lazowski treatment. I really don't. Never been less worried about a young player than I'm about how he reacts to this. They're actually interesting story. The first start for Leicester or first appearance for Leicester first team against Sale 2020-2019. Got um, charged down. Sale scored. Sale pumped Leicester. Um, yeah, it's worked out all right for him since.